good day everyone uh, welcome to my talk who broke the build using cuttle to improve end to end testing and release faster uh, uh, the title of my talk is who broke the build have you ever heard this in your development teams yes how many of you are developers here okay and managers okay thank god have you ever seen your manager like this any time i mean just kidding but uh, uh manager would say that who has actually asked who has actually broken the build the developer would say that hey i don't know maybe it's me i would check and get back okay and probably fix it as well okay uh little about myself i am ram senior software engineer r and d bangalore india uh i work for jfrog an israeli company uh passionate about open source and loves playing table tennis uh a quick agenda uh an overview of how a development environment would look, look look like and the challenges that we have faced in end to end testing okay more primarily on our uh, developer machines as well as introducing a tool called cuttle kubernetes test tool and a quick demo and summary okay so an ideal development environment would look like this say as a say i'm a new developer joined a new team generally it takes something like uh, a day or two to set up an environment roughly he would go through a wiki page or a confluence page to look up doc i mean look up copy the scripts download and set it up there is an always a chance of errors okay but we would like to have some automation around that so that developers can start contributing on day one if needed okay so primarily single click setup completely automating clone that repo and do a setup and it should work okay and develop and test locally that is more important say i'm i'm being given a mac or a windows machine or a linux machine but eventually uh, all our uh, deployments would happen on a linux or a kubernetes or anything right at the end goal is one thing and we might run it on different machines okay to have a flexibility around developing on a same environment makes us makes our life easier say for example i work on a feature i would say as a developer it works on my mac okay when we deploy it on a machine on a server and production server it says hey it doesn't work okay so we would like to have and test locally develop and test locally and more importantly same as production environment say for example i develop a feature okay uh, push it to a git repository and make sure that all the tests pass and then i promote it to a qa or a production server okay eventually in small companies developers will do the deployment as well in production but in big companies they might ask some uh, sres or some other devops engineer to do the deployment which for those they won't be aware of your code what you are trying to deploy what new features bring in okay so we would like to have a environment which is very similar to production so that reproduction of issues is easier say for example if something doesn't work on production as a developer i can probably reproduce it on my local to see where it fails rather than saying an environment issue it doesn't help okay okay so as i spoken automation is the way forward okay uh i we do at jfrog we have dev environments we would automate it completely automated developers can just clone a repo and just do a setup okay automation which would mean instead of setting it up for hours you can use it i mean you can actually set it up in minutes which would also mean no manual steps okay which would obviously mean error free and a quick reload this is important say for example i'm developing a feature changing something on the ui say for example okay i would like to locally deploy that file and test it rather than deploying the entire setup okay so code deploy cycle faster uh 
as I said, dev environment should be same as to save reproduction of production is issues. Okay, say, <clears throat> let's take a use case. I'm a developer, I'm working on a feature branch, okay? Uh, what I generally do is, I get the requirements from a product manager, okay? And do an estimate, and then work, start working on that feature if it's been approved, okay? One developer starts design and start coding and everything. He wants to write some test on the features that he has developed, right? So he would generally write unit test on the code that he has written. Most developers, I mean, previously, even I didn't use to write end-to-end -end test because I feel that I don't know what, how the environment would look like. It's very difficult to actually set it up, okay? So developer writes the unit test, and then on the new feature developed, when I write tests, when I mean tests, the unit tests generally, yeah. commits them, okay? Locally commit and pushes to a Git repository. So when you do that, okay, let me quickly go back here, okay? So generally, I can probably use this, okay? Developer starts writing the code, writes some unit tests, okay? commits, okay, and raises a pull request or a merge request, okay. Generally, these remote end-to-end -end tests are run on a remote server rather than on local, okay. Which, which would mean, say, a developer commits a feature or a commits a feature, these tests, I mean, in, in our cases, it might run for a couple of days as well, or three to four hours at least, to have the entire reproduction. Say something fails, the f end feedback, getting back to the developer is huge here in terms of the cycle it takes. So let me quickly explain in a steps, okay? End-to-end -end test. These tests are performed on generally on a remote CI CD server, probably Jenkins or some other server, okay? If a test fails, developer will fix, commit locally, pushes it again, updates the merge request or pull request, okay? Test run on a remote server, it would take a few hours or a day, then comes back and saying that, hey, your tests have failed again, which would mean developer starts, needs to understanding his code, where he has done some fixes. There might be few environment issues as well when you run on those environments. So this round trips continues. How can we avoid this? This is the same problem that we had at JFrog and most probably at other companies as well, right? So what we thought was, why, why can't we bring those remote tests locally so that each developer can have the flexibility to run those tests locally? Okay, so what I mean by that is, instead of ru running these remote tests, bring them back here, parallelly run with your unit test, or combine it with your unit test. That way, you don't need to have an internet to run those tests as well, okay? Everything is set up locally. You have all those tests that you run remotely on your local, okay? Run those tests. If something fails, developer would be happy to locally fix them, push them, and commit it, okay? So we are actually avoiding the pushing and getting back the round trip of it, okay? Let me quickly explain what I mean by that, okay? Instead of remote end-to-end -end tests, use local end-to-end -end test, commit local changes to a feature branch rather than pushing it, which would mean instead of committing and pushing it to a Git repository, you would just amend the commits if needed, if a fix is needed, okay? This way reduces the round trip to fix issues and save time. Having said this, so we were evaluating at JFrog a couple of tools which we could make our life easier, okay? So, uh, most of our testing suit was on uh, Helm, okay, Kubernetes. So we were evaluating a couple of tools, and we found a tool called uh, Helm testing, uh, CI testing tool, which is part of the Helm itself. So what it does is, uh, say you have an application, you want to deploy it using Helm charts, it would run these tests in a sequential order, okay, which would mean, say I have 20 tests, it would run each one of them in sequential. So it was taking something like 
two hours for running these tests. And we raised a feature request asking them to, hey, can we have a uh, parallel support? They did not come back. Okay, So we thought, hey, is there any better tool that we were looking out? So that's when we figured out a tool called Cuttle. It's a CNCF approved project. Okay. It's part of the Kudo Builder team that has actually developed this tool. Okay. And so what it does is it is actually a Kubernetes test tool, but it can be used on any testing any uh, non-Kubernetes as well. Let me explain with a demo at the end, but I would like to summarize what it does. Okay. It's a toolkit for writing test, mainly designed for testing operators of Kubernetes controllers. If you are new to Kubernetes, don't worry. Okay. Uh, however, it can declaratively test any Kubernetes objects. I can say any objects, but for now, I would say Kubernetes because this tool was developed primarily for testing operators. Okay. YAML based, so you don't need to learn a new language. How many of you are Go developers or Java developers here? Rest, front end, more to the back end. Okay, whatever the language, you don't need to worry about it. I started my career as a Java developer. Okay, but it's YAML based. You just need to write a structure in a YAML. It would run the test for you. Okay, it accelerates the ability to create an end-to-end -end test environment. Say I have an application. I would like to deploy it on Kubernetes. Okay. It provides an easy platform to run those tests on any any version of Kubernetes. Say, for example, I developed a feature now last year. I would like to test it on all supported Kubernetes version. So currently, Kubernetes is on 1.31, I suppose, 1.31, or every six months there would be a release. Okay, so it can test it on any Kubernetes version. Just spin it up and test it up. I would show it in a demo. Okay. So to get started, so if you are a Mac developer, if you are using a Mac, sorry, you can use Brew Tab Kudo Builder, or you can just install Brew Install Cuttle, C-U-T-T-L. I mean, this is an older way of doing it, uh, but you can use Brew Install Cuttle. That would install Cuttle for you on your local desktop Mac. Okay. Uh, and if you are a Linux, you can use Crew as a packet manager and do a kubectl crew install Cuttle. Okay. And these are uh, CLI's way of installing Cuttle. And if you are a Go developer, you can actually integrate within the code itself. Okay, add it as a Go mod and just go get GitHub Kudo Builder Cuttle. Okay, so you can actually write Cuttle test in your Go code as well. Okay, which we want to avoid generally, but there is another way of doing it. Okay, so how is Cuttle used for? If you are an application developer or application admin who wants to create automation of Kubernetes environment, say I don't know anything about Kubernetes. Okay, I want to deploy my application and test it. This is where you want. Okay, and and you want to test application on multiple versions of Kubernetes. Say, and if you are a developer who wants to easily test operators, but you can test anything. Okay, without writing the Go code actually. It is developed in Go, by the way, but it can be used for testing any objects, I would say, on Kubernetes. Okay. Okay. So Cuttle has three parts. One is a test suit. Okay. If you have used any test suit, you can probably compare it with this. So you can see an API version, uh, Cuttle Dev V1 Beta 1. This is a CRD, custom resource uh, definition. CRD and kind is a test suit. You can see kind as a test suit. And line number three is a kind start is equals to false. What would it mean is, say if I want to deploy my application on an existing Kubernetes cluster, you can set that option as false. But in my demo, I would set it as true so that it, it can start Kubernetes cluster on my Mac using Docker desktop or Rancher desktop. Okay. Uh, name, anything that can be given, test directory. So I, I can write a folder called test, end-to-end -end test, and write all those tests. Uh, for my demo, I would be deploying Artifactory OSs, open source version of Artifactory, and see the installation works, okay? 
and there is a last line timeout. You can set the timeout for the entire suit, 300 seconds. If the tests don't run within that time frame, it would indicate the tests have failed. Okay. First is a test suit. Suit is a combination of test steps. So each test step is an you can see there, this is an API version, Cuttle Dev V1 Beta 1, and a kind test step, okay? And the commands. You can actually run any existing shell script or that you use for running your test, okay? Uh, for an easy way, I'm just trying to install Helm, install, upgrade, artifactory, okay? And you can see the namespace is actually scoped. So it randomly creates a namespace if you don't define it, okay? Uh, so test suit, test step, test step, collection of test steps is a test suit, okay? And the next step is assertion. You have a test step, so you want to do an assertion based on what it has actually run, okay? So what I'm saying is I've deployed Artifactory. I would like to test its send stateful application. So I would like to sec check the replicas are one post installation, okay? Just to verify that installation. This is a simple test. Say you are an application developer or a Java developer who wants to test the APIs. Okay? So what you would do is, instead of writing a simple test, you would have a script that would make a curl call. Okay? Request response can be actually, request can be in the test step, and the response can be mapped in an assertion to verify that the final response that you get from a test step is actually matched with the assertion that you passed. So this is a kind of declarative testing that I mean YAML-based declarative testing. So the final assertion that you would like to check in the output, OK? So I have end-to-end -end test here. I have two tests. One is install and scale, for example, OK? And there is a cuttle test.yaml. This is the test route, OK? And a cube config is something that it gets generated or if you would like to use an existing cluster, you can copy that kubeconfig file here so that it connects to that cluster and run this test. So in my demo, what I would do is, I assume that I don't have Kubernetes set up, okay? I would use kind as a local cluster using Rancher desktop, okay? And run this test, okay? I would like to quickly demo. So can you see my screen or let me expand? Is it better? Yes. Let me do a quick. So I have all my tests here in a test folder. Uh, I have two tests, one is default one is non-split, okay? I would show you the configuration first before running the test. And there is a cuttle test.yaml. This is the test suit file that I have. And the report, which I've actually run before, so it would defaultly generate an XML-based report that you can actually uh, probably integrate with your pipelines to see the report as well, okay? What test has actually passed. It supports both JSON as well as an XML, okay? By default, it runs a, gives an XML report, okay? Let me quickly show you the code that I have. Okay. So you can see here, I have a cuttle test.yaml. This is a test suit that I was talking about, okay? And a kind cluster. I'm setting kind as start, kind as true, okay? Which would mean it would uh, use the Docker desktop or the Rancher desktop to download an image of kind and install a Kubernetes cluster locally, okay? And deploy your application on that Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I'm setting up a few repositories, one repository called JFrog Helm repository, okay? And updating it. I've just set the timeout of 600. I hope the Wi-Fi connection is good enough to download the images within 10 minutes, I would say, okay? Then I have two tests. One is, okay, let me. Uh, 
Let me minimize this. So for the sake of convenience, I'm just, what I'm trying to do, helm install upgrade, any name, uh, JFrog artifactory OSs, namespace is uh, parameterized and set. There are two ways of running artifactory. Split containers, I would show you, to true. And this is a default one and a non-split. So I'm setting uh, artifactory to split containers as false. Two options of running artifactory install, OK? Okay, so what I would do is I would go back to the command line. This is my directory structure that I have. I would use kubectl curtle test. So if I run this command, what it would do is it would run both the tests. Okay, It would detect that there are two tests and run the two tests. Say that I would like to test only one test. Say I've done a feature, I've added a new test, to check whether that test successfully passes, I can just run using an option called test and the folder name that you want here. Okay, for the sake of convenience, I'm writing uh, running all these tests parallelly. Okay, so you can see uh, since we have set the kind cluster as true, it is starting a kind cluster. And it has created a, Cuttle has created a directory, OK? Just for the sake of convenience, I would probably maximize this and clear. OK. You can see here, what I'm trying to do here is I'm exporting a kube config file to get into those kind cluster and access that cluster, OK? Simple export cube config. This is the same directory path that I'm going in. Okay, I would just change one second the directory over here. Uh, that was my previous run. Okay, just ignore that. So I've exported this. Okay, what it has done is it started a kind cluster, adding containers to the kind. Okay, so it has actually run the initial suit setup, helm repo add, which is already exist, it's skipped, and it says that it has two tests, okay? It has detected that it has two tests. One is the default test, one is the non-split test, okay? So what it does is it creates a namespace for each one of those tests and runs those tests on that, okay? So it has created two namespaces. To access this, I use a tool called canines, open source tools to access a Kubernetes cluster. See here, this is a kind cluster that I'm running through, okay? I'm running a kind cluster. These are the two namespaces that it has created, okay? Okay, let me get into those uh, namespaces and access those ports and see I can do a describe of the pod. You can use kubectl describe, or you can directly access this. It's, it says that it is pulling an image, OK? So let me quickly explain. So I've run two tests. One is a default, which is a split mode. You can see, sorry, this is a non-default test. You can see Artifactory with a split mode. Artifactory has these microservices inside it. So I'm running as a non-split mode. Two ways of testing Artifactory, okay? This is one way, and this is another way where it has a single Artifactory image, okay? Uh, the, the test would probably take around five to six minutes, okay? So what it does is it has created namespaces and installed, okay? Once the install is done, the assertion would kick in and then do an assertion whether the replica counts are one each, 
if if they are both one each, it would it would terminate the test and give you a report saying that all the tests have passed. Okay, say that something fails due to some error. So what would developers do is they would probably investigate the code what they have written, come uh, locally commit rather than pushing it. Okay, so this is the same test that we run on a CI server as well when somebody raises a pull request. So which is very equivalent of what we run locally and on the final test environment that we have. Okay. Let me quickly walk through the documentation around this. Uh, so I was referring to I was referring to a, a project called Kudo Builder, right? So Kudo for Kudo Builder testing operators. Uh, they have actually uh, open sourced this, Cuttle, okay? Uh, this has a good community around this, frequent releases as well, uh, and you can probably raise an issue if you have encountered anything, okay? And they would be happy to take a pull request as well. As a company, we use this tool, and we contribute sometimes as well if we found any issues on that, okay? And there is a wiki page to get started. Uh, one second. Cuttle.dev is a wiki page. So you can see brew install Cuttle CLI. Uh, you can go to the get started CLI usage I was referring to. Uh, how can you actually install commands? Okay. You can also, okay. One more uh, thing that I forgot is the PAL support. Okay, let me quickly introduce the tool that we have used before, Helm testing, that is actually from So earlier we were using this chart testing tool. This is from, from the Helm community itself, but it doesn't have the support of parallel support. So I think our issue, I mean, when we raise this, I think uh, they have closed that issue without uh, doing that. Okay, no worries. But <clears throat> so we moved on to a new tool called Cuttle, okay, which supports parallel. Okay, by by default, it it has eight support. You can run eight tests parallelly. So earlier we were running all those tests, which took something like one hour forty minutes. Okay. Using Cuttle, we were able to finish it in less than 15 minutes. Okay, cool. And you can use, as I said, if you're a Go developer, you can use this tool, integrate into your import, and then use, you can write those tests in the Go code itself, okay? Uh, some tips and tricks. Say if, you're, if you want to download this Docker image natively, you don't need to rebuild or pull those images. You can actually set, uh, caching as well, image caching in kind, okay? So that it doesn't take much, lot of time pulling those images, okay? So you can set kind node cache as true, okay? So that if you know that you are not changing the Docker images, you can probably set that kind node, which would cache those images locally, okay? And run those tests much faster, okay? Huh, okay, see, you can see the tests are terminated, Cuttle terminates the test. We can see the report as well. Let's go back to the namespaces. Okay, the other one is also terminating, one after the other, and it would go, it would give you a report as well, saying that hey, I have two tests, two have successfully passed, or one has failed. And what it does, it it clears the namespaces and everything for you. Okay, so you don't need to bother about it. So you can see it has run two tests. It says two tests have passed, okay? Let's go back to the report. So once you run these, there is a kind log. Say if you want to investigate what has actually happened. If something has failed, you can get into the logs and see the control pane images and ports 
where it has actually failed if even if your output doesn't show you everything okay so if you are running locally you have this flexibility of debugging those logs as well okay i would generally delete after my successful run okay as i was saying there is a report that it actually run this is an older report i think okay just ignore since i have not set xml or anything okay so and this is the uh, test yaml file okay so uh, say for example if you want to test an api okay so what you would do is say you are running a shell script initial i mean and you don't want to create those namespaces and other things what you can do is in the test step invoke that shell script that you are actually running so that it would create a namespace deploy your application okay tear off if everything is done so it's not like it's just for kubernetes it can be used for any uh, any any thing primarily for kubernetes to automate the creation of namespace and deletion of namespaces okay uh okay let's go back to the so the references a uh, cutl documentation is cutl dev docs uh, there is a dedicated uh, slack channel on kubernetes called kudo kudo builder uh, github references are kudo builder cutl okay and i've referred to a tool called k9s okay Uh, it's an open source tool derailed k9s you can do a brew install k9s on your mac so what it does is so if say for example if i want to uh, uh, open the kubernetes cluster see the pods uh, do get into that container to see what happens this is an easy way of doing it okay okay quick summary we have learned about a new tool called cutl open source tool free okay it's used for our local end to end testing okay which is very similar to what we deploy on our end test servers okay which would mean developers were happy to have few broken builds okay and which would mean release faster uh, we were actually consuming one one hour 40 minutes now we reduced to less than 15 minutes okay and which would mean happy developers okay any questions happy to take them sure Sorry, give me a second uh, you can have a mic just uh that the k9s um utility that's mac only or is there an equivalent uh, on it's linux? equivalent on linux as well okay that's just just double checking yes any questions um so i understand the concept of shifting left um in the in the whole development life cycle but uh, in this particular case let's say you have a team of developers working together on a project and there is uh, there is a failure there is a build failure how do you share the results or the other logs across the team because in this case you're running it locally so do you share the files no so okay so we maintain it on a git repository okay everything say say for example i develop a feature my fellow developer also develop a feature so what i would do is i would write my own end to end test okay okay say new test new feature new test that i've added say that everything works then only i would push to a git repository for a pr review once it gets merged he would take the changes and implement his or rebase his changes from my mine and do do his changes you don't need to share anything so let's imagine a scenario wherein you made some changes and it broke somebody else's tests okay so that's the reason we run all the tests not just my test right correct right so when i so i as i said i've just given an example to run my test locally but you need to run the entire test before it moves to the master that's the main agenda of this talk okay Got not it. just my test all test thank you thanks for joining me any further questions i'm happy to you can probably reach me on linkedin or twitter thanks for your time today